All right. Hello, chat. How's it going? Hopefully well. We're back. We're continuing with the Armored Core ranked grind. We are so close and yet so far from the top. But every day, regardless of how much progress we make, we make progress. Uh, I believe we left off like on the upper end of Ace or Ace, sorry, uh, of A2. The Ace Combat Brain Rot's getting to me, if you can't tell. Just the amount of Armored Core and Ace Combat mix ups is ridiculous at this point. Uh, I think we were on the upper end of A2. If, if memory serves me well we should definitely be getting into a3 today probably not a4 <laughs> as much as i'm sitting here and i'm like maybe we could get into a4 we would have to really we would have to start zooming we would have to go We would have to absolutely fly. So I doubt we're gonna get that far. Oh, we are, we're, we're on the high, high end of A2. Okay, I thought, I was thinking more like we were three quarters of the way, not like we were only three wins away from A3. Okay, that's a great starting point. Maybe A4. I would still have to really get a lot of wins, but it's possible. Hello, Gustavo, Audric, Yan, Tidbit. Started Morrowind about a week ago. It's so awesome. It's one of the most restrictive and most freeing and broken games. I've never heard a more accurate sentence. It is one of the most restrictive and one of the most freeing games you'll ever play. <laughs> I've never heard a truer statement. Uh, hello, Stygian and Alarod. Hello. Welcome. Uh, I was listening to OST Disc 3. I've got to the Unchanged Formula Front song. There are two of them. They're both great. Like, Formula Front had a banger soundtrack. But when I was listening through it and I got to those songs, I was just like, who the hell just took a song from Formula Front and just tossed it on here? Because they had, like, a bunch of, like, remade or remixed older Armored Core songs. And then there were just two... Um, two Formula Front, uh, for, uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. Formula Front songs just pulled over one to one. That's a good start. Matchmaking canceled. Magic crafting system. It's so ridiculous. Uh, Morrowind is like when you start out. It um. It, it's like you can do so little. 
at the start of a Morrowind playthrough. Because anything you try to do is going to kill you. Because Morrowind is the most dangerous, like, Elder Scrolls country. At least as, in terms of how the games play. Like, Morrowind, out of all the nations you visit in the Elder Scrolls games, is the country that just feels the most, like, out to kill you. But once you once you stick with it and you, you start to, like, improve your character and, like, open some stuff up, the, the amount of freedom in Morrowind is incredible. I, it's why it's one of my favorite RPGs ever. Still by far my favorite Elder Scrolls game. And I, I don't know where exactly it stands, but definitely somewhere in my top five RPGs ever too. At least, it could be a top three, maybe. I can kite this guy. Double flamethrower, I learned last stream. Wait, is this the same guy? Hold on. Siege missiles and flamethrowers. I think this is the guy who I was like, oh wait, I can just kite this dude. Like, I don't even need to play for melee. I think it's the same guy. Unless this is some like weird meta that is emerging with dual siege missile, dual flamethrower. It's gotta be the same dude. Yeah, I can actually, like, this is one of the few builds that I can actually kite now. You can do invasions now. I have seen the co-op mod. It seems great. It seems awesome. By 400? Oh no, he's playing with alchemy too. You think the custom spell making is crazy. The custom spell making in Morrowind has nothing on the custom alchemy in Morrowind. The custom potion making system. Oh, come on, man. I'm working for these. Man, he's trying to assault boost me. And he just, he doesn't have the speed. Unfortunately for him. I think his build is super cool though, because when it's up close, it's terrifying. And I'm sure if I wasn't playing like a midweight, that the missiles would be messing me up more too. Like, it's a really cool build. But once I realized that I can just kite the double flamethrower, because Exigens have just enough range to actually get decent damage from outside of the flamethrower cloud, it's like the tiniest window. I can barely do it, but I can do it. It's a cool build, because it's scary. Like, I, I found the easy way for my matchup to win, but it is a cool build. I think it is the same guy. I think so too. Sampus and... Are those sweet 16s? This is scary. This is scary. Have you reached the final pulverizer? Uh, I, I fought final pulverizer when I did the review playthrough of Last Raven. Yeah. That was the that was the story route that I went down. Was the it was one of the pulverizer routes. I don't remember if it was number one or number two. It was one of them. Speaking of guys I can kite. Ooh, that hurts a lot. I think this first round is going to go to him. Yeah, he has pulse armor. Absolutely. Oh, that's interesting. Punishing with sweet 16s is not something you see very often. I respect it. Oh, there's a bonus one? No, 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 not that, if that's what you mean. No. Still ate it. Okay. That's a fair damage trade, but he's going to stagger me before I stagger him. And I'm going to die. He won. Oh, wait. I only noticed his health there, like, last second. Oh, Jess. Hold on. There's a chance. 
There's a chance. His build is surprisingly scary. I saw it and I was like, it could be good. But I don't know, it seems kind of weird. It is good. Ow, fuck. Oh, he ate too much chainsaw damage. Also, lag. Worked in my favor, but holy shit. You really... Hold on, let's recap. Jess comes in. Jess says hi with the little octopus emoji. She says, oh, I'll be lurking. And redeems no swearing on her way out to work. Need several more playthroughs. Oh, you need to beat every mission. It's not even just getting, getting all six endings, it's every mission. I mean, we're gonna be 100%ing Last Raven. I was gonna say soon, but not actually that soon, because I forgot that uh, Formula Front is in there in the middle as well. Um, He had a laser pistol and an exogen, so his damage is gonna be scary. Hold on, I'll do Toolwig. I'll start it after this match, because I don't have time to start the timer and grab the shades and everything right now. I want a shield? Okay. Interesting matchup. Pulse armor. I was hoping for something else. Pulse armor means that he's scary. If he made a poor expansion choice, I wouldn't have been very scared of this build. But because it's pulse armor, I am scared. I'm dead. Oh, that was so cool. I, I, blah, 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 blah. Words. Hello, Aniket. This wouldn't be a problem if you were a good Christian boy. I am a good Christian boy. I just swear a lot. Oh, and Daniel, hello. He's scared of the chainsaw. Rightfully so. Wow. This is a fun matchup, actually. Do manual control for some of Formula Front? I probably will for some of the bonus stuff. Uh, I think I'll still run through the main campaign doing, what's it? Doing like AI only. But since there's gonna be a bunch of bonus arena opponents, I could definitely mess around with the manual control there for a bit. Cause I am curious, like how, well it stacks up against like just a classic armored core arena in that sense but i wanted to you know get like the intended experience out of it when i played for the review gg to that guy that was very fun <laughs> that it was intense we ended with 400 ap like that was very close at the end too Really weird. I, like when I saw that build, I wasn't sure about it, but that, that is, again, a surprisingly scary one. Cosplay ACs that you like in Formula Front, that could be good too.
Because Formula Front, because it's a purely arena game, like an actual purely arena game, not like Nine Breaker, whatever the hell was going on there. Oh, hell. We had a minute. Um, you have like one more bar. We have to do, we have to fill this bar and then fill another one. And then we do promos for S and then we'll be in once I get through promos. But A3 is a big moment. I mean, every sub rank in A is a big moment in this climb. Oh, speaking of rank, hold on. I haven't tweeted it yet, but I have, I have a, uh, a Tekken update. Because I can't go a stream without talking about Tekken. We all know it. Wait until after this match. Great first round for me. Uh, grenade launcher scared me. This, th I'm, I don't think this will be an easy match. I think I got really lucky that he didn't pop an expansion. Just like genuine dumb luck on the first round. Oh, he only has one grenade launcher. Okay, maybe not so bad. He does have exigence. Those are always great. Ow. How much you want to bet it's assault armor? Oh no, pulse armor. I got almost all of my damage in to kill him there. Which is also insanely lucky. How, how do we get that lucky two rounds in a row? GG to that guy. I, I don't feel like I earned it. Just ridiculous amounts of luck on my end in that match. He played well and I just got the dumbest win ever, to be completely honest. <laughs> like back to back, just really dumb luck. I played Fallout New Vegas, of course. Don't improve in-game performance, only performance in bed. Okay, you guys ready for this? I actually have the file open in the background already, so all I have to do is click the button. You ready? Boom. Tech and update right before stream. This is not the same gym you have seen before. Let me tell you. This gym, so much scarier than what you've seen before from my gym. This gym is way scarier. Also, peep the uh, canceling Eddie in the in the bottom right. Not using Elgin. I was not using Elgin. I had one of the new Tekken t-shirts. Jim. Jim like J-I-M. Me and Owen have been calling him Jim because I misspoke and called him that once and it was the funniest thing ever to us. And so now he's just Jim. Um, Speaking of Eddie, uh, I've played him a little bit when Eddie was in early access, I could not defend against Eddie. I had no idea what he was doing. I played Eddie for like two hours last night with Owen. We were up late playing Eddie. And then when I played a little bit to get the rank up there this morning, I played like three Eddies back to back and I don't think I lost a single match. Like just playing the character for a couple hours and figuring out how he works. He's suddenly not that bad to defend against. This guy is on A rank promos. He has the coral rifle and a bazooka. He's gonna be, he's gonna be spooky. Hold on. I'm not sure if I like this one. But yeah, that's one of those um, Tekken t-shirts that they added for free that I think are awesome. I actually, I still need to order that t-shirt. The one that my Jin was wearing in that custom, I still need to order that, the black t-shirt. It's the Tekken 1 t-shirt with all the OG characters like in the lineup in the back. I want that shirt. It's like 25 bucks. It's not even bad, dude. I'm buying that shirt, 100%. Just the OG Tekken t-shirt, I want it. Uh-oh. People are always like, do you really wear all this gamer merch that you have in public? But like, you gotta realize, once gamer, once the game, or like the console in some cases where I have like the PS1 t-shirt, once it becomes like a retro thing, it becomes cool. 
to wear that merch. Like, if you're wearing, I don't know, Last of Us 2 merch, it's lame, you know? Like, that's considered super nerdy to be wearing, like, merch for new games. People think that it's super weird and lame. But if you're wearing, like, retro gaming merch, it's respectable. I love all of my retro gamer merch. Like, when it's, when it's that old, you don't even need to get the stealth merch anymore. You can just own it. Because people are like, oh, dude, I played Tekken when I was a kid. People think it's sweet. Okay, that build did scare me. Thankfully, this early win streak continues. Chainsaw go burr. Tech M shirt, yes. Nerdy but cool. Yeah, I feel like once it gets past the point of being like 20 years old, it, it suddenly is like, oh yeah, it's cool to wear merch from that long ago. That only people that are in, yeah, like stealth merch. That, that's what I mean when I say stealth merch, where it's like, it, only if you know, just makes people think that you're weird and old. No, cause you get like the, you know, if I walked around in like, it, my PS1 t-shirt is one of them that I, I've gotten comments on before. Where I have this really cool, um, not not the big graphic tee. I, I keep saying t-shirt. It's a long sleeve. Um, it's just this super dope, uh, like, PS1 shirt. And I've had dudes in public comment on it and be like, oh, dude. Where, they were like, how did you get this shirt? What, what website is this on? And I've actually, I had one guy order one, like, on the spot. What t-shirt we got today? Uh, fund the balls. Oh wait, no swearing just ended. It, it's the look at the nuts on this fella shirt that I have. Plus flannel, because it's cold in here. <laughs> because for some reason, oh, sorry. For some reason, it's still really cold in Minnesota. Uh, we got up to like 60 degrees for like a week. And then we dropped back down. It's still cold here. Oof, oof. Oh, this is scary. I don't like this one. Oh, I had to do it because I had no energy and I was going to lose anyway. Nuts isn't no swearing. I was going to say it's a stupid ass shirt. That's, I was about to say the stupid ass fun the bald shirt. Bald? Fun the balls shirt. So I don't look like a normie. Did I, uh, I think I did. Did I tweet? I, I got a comment way back when I was doing the Armored Core reviews. I'm trying to remember. Oh, I think it was in like the Armored Core 2 video. It was one of the videos where I talked about, um, the old school controls being bad. So it was either the original or the AC2 or the AC3 video were the three where I brought up controls. So I brought it up in the original video and then with each like new generation of Armored Core, I was like, did they change the controls? Absolutely not. Why would they do that? Um, Because I said that the controls were bad, I had one guy call me a normie. Like unironically called me a normie. <laughs> just because I didn't like the old school Armored Core controls. Yes! Oh my God, I almost bounced off of him. The streak continues. Gave me a Demon Slayer t-shirt for my birthday. That's the worst. Like I do have a ton of like blatant nerd merch and it's all from like you know, Christmas gifts or something where someone will just get me like an Xbox T like graphic T where it's literally just the Xbox logo on the front of a t-shirt. And I'm just like, I'm never gonna wear this. I have so many of them like stat. I have one. I have one that has like, a, like 10 different controllers, like different game controllers. Like it's got NES, SNES, Xbox, PS1, like whatever, right? A ton of controllers. And it says, uh, choose your weapon under them. <laughs> I 
I have heard disc three. Oh, it's the same guy. But his build is so scary. I don't like <laughs> I have that one sitting in my closet somewhere. Because I'm also incapable of throwing out clothes unless they're like genuinely ruined or something. Even in that case, I have some clothes with like paint on them. Like t-shirts with paint on them that I just keep as like, yeah, I can wear this around if I'm ever just like chilling at home for the day. It's whatever. No point throwing it out. Still a perfectly fine shirt. As long as like I don't have to look presentable. Um. Yeah, I just have a problem with throwing out clothes. It's like my one thing. I just can't throw out old clothes. So I just have like stacks on stacks of this awful, like most blatant nerd merch that I've gotten for Christmas over the years from family members. Man, I have to sweat my ass off to beat this guy. His build is super scary. That's so corny, I would unironically wear it. It does, that one is like so bad that it almost, almost comes around to being like, yeah, I could wear this in public. Did he give up? Is that actually? He ejected all his weapons and went AFK. Yep, all right. I mean, I know that I won three rounds in a row, but like, come on, man. I thought we were having a good match. I don't know. He almost killed me last round. I don't know. I thought we were having a good game. Maybe he's having a bad day. Do something funny for him. I don't know. They want to work really hard for S. I don't get like the, the giving up if you uh, lose like multiple rounds in a row, right? I don't get that. Cause like, you could still turn it around. You might find some, like when I first played the guy with the dual flamethrower and dual siege missile, and the flamethrowers were just melting me. Like a few rounds in playing against that guy, I suddenly realized, oh, I can just kite this guy. Like if I completely change my play style for just this matchup, like I can win. You might find something. Like, you might be able to turn it around. I don't get the just giving up thing. It's the same when people do it on Tekken. People will just randomly stop playing in the middle of a Tekken set. And I'm just like, why? Why? I don't know, a coach. It's true. Ah. Um, who was it? I think it's Maximilian Dude actually did like this talk about how your rank on fighting games doesn't matter. And it's not that he literally means like, oh, it's not any indication of like how good you are or anything. Like he's not saying that. But he was like, if you're playing ranked fighting games, like you shouldn't be playing for the rank. You should be playing so that you can like learn and improve. So even when you're losing, like maybe you D rank. But like every time that you lose, you're also going to probably learn something. And like, you know, you, you get better, even if you're losing. And if you get better, you'll rank up. Like even if you go down for a little bit, you'll get your rank back. Like you, it, getting demoted is not the end of the world. 
Because if you actually deserve the rank, you're not going to have an issue with getting it back. It'll just happen. It's amazing how fun being bad and getting better is if you remove most of the ego from the equation. It is! I can't take my shades off, but that's the Chulwig timer. It absolutely, like, I can't stop playing Tekken. I'm approaching, like, 150 hours played of this goddamn game. And I still can't stop playing it. I, I fully expected to buy Tekken and have this be, like, a, you know a phase where I really play a lot of Tekken 8 for a couple months and then I'm done. I'm still playing it. Because I'm still just like, every day I go on, I win some, I get my ass kicked some, but over time, on the whole, I learn and I get better at it. And I'm addicted to the process of just getting better at Tekken every day. Like almost three months later, I still just can't stop. I can't put it down. I've probably gone like four or five days in the last three months total without playing any Tekken 8. And I, I'm not joking. Like I've played at least like 20, 30 minutes a day, minimum, every day. Did you listen to any of the Sonic Frontiers soundtrack when that came out? I did, I did. There were a few songs that were good on the Sonic Frontiers soundtrack. Thirty-three matchups with over a hundred moves each. It's so much to learn. It's so much to learn. Oh, sweet Jesus! <laughs> okay, the only saving grace on this one, I heard they were bad. They are bad. Thankfully, it's all like cosmetic stuff, so it's totally one of those things where it's like if you don't want to engage with it, you don't have to. But. Like, the it, it's the battle pass was what recently got added that people are pissed about. That's, the battle pass is like, what the fuck? I, I did a whole rant about it the other day during the Ace Combat stream. Because the battle pass is genuinely really bad. Like, it's a 60 tier pass. And really, there's maybe like three items on the premium pass that I would actually want, and that's it. Like across the premium and the free tiers. There's like three on the premium version that are like, oh yeah, I would like to have that. And everything else just sucks. Like genuinely, like I don't even want it. And uh, then you add in the whole like tech and coin thing where TLDR the, the battle pass costs $6 to buy, but you can only buy stuff in Tekken 8 by using the in-game currency. And you can't just buy $6 of in-game currency. What you have to do is you have to buy either $5 of currency or $10. So if you want to get the battle pass, you're gonna have to spend $10 to get the $6 pass. And it's done that way so that afterwards you have $4 of currency sitting in your account that now you, you have to do something with that $4 of currency, otherwise you've just wasted the money, so you're probably gonna put more money in to be able to buy more stuff. It's a classic strategy that you see in a lot of games that use in-game currency, like premium currency like that. But it still just sucks to see it in tech and <laughs> to see it in anything. I don't like seeing it in anything, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's bad. It's not like something that's unique to them. Like they've come up with this awful system or anything. But it's still shit. Like it's still perfectly um, open to criticism. Or sorry, deserving of criticism. That's the word I'm looking for. Ooh! Chainsaw gravity. It happens sometimes. It was scarier than I thought. I was thinking like, okay, it's kind of scary, but he has no stagger potential. But the fact that those uh, those lasers could just come out and hit me for like 5K at any given time, that was scary. You see the result of my latest hobby fixation? I did see that. I did see that. Did you actually buy it? I, I figured that it was just like you had some from before laying around.
If I was a fifth as good at games as I am, in terms of Twitch reflexes and visual proce processing, would I prefer to painstakingly improve at the games that I play now or play other games? Um, I'd probably still want to improve at them. I kind of just have that bug in general. Um, like going way back, like all of my gaming over the last second, not all of it, but if you go back and look at like the games that I've played the most over like the last decade, there's a very noticeable pattern of them all being games that like I can kind of play over and over again and get better at them every time that I play. And that's like a lot of the appeal for me. Ooh, ow. And even like with Tekken 8, um, when the game came out three months ago, I was really bad at Tekken 8. At Tekken in general, because I played Tekken 7 a little bit and I was awful at it, like literally hard stuck at the bottom rank of Tekken 7. I wish I was joking. I was that bad when Tekken 8 came out. Um, now in Tenryu, I think I'm in the top like 18% of players or something like that in the last three months. Less than three months. Mm. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Linear rifles are one of my worst matchups on this build. They just chew straight through me. The stagger buildup, the range, the damage over time. It's a terrible matchup for me. I just can't handle linear rifles well. One of those things that hard counters me. Oh, I was really praying for that stagger to come through in time. Oh, that missile. When they were already a top pick. I don't know. I don't know. Um, even outside of games, though, with like the improvement thing, like I've played guitar for almost 10 years, like consistently. Um, I've worked out almost every day for like the last two years. I kind of just have a bit of a uh, an improvement bug, <laughs> a bit of a fixation, like a general fixation on um, just being able to like pick up stuff that I can incrementally improve at over time. I get into that shit like a lot. What am I up against? Um, <laughs> okay. Spread bazookas, double spread bazookas, a javelin bazooka, and a lancer. Ah! Whoa! Whoa. That's the game plan? Does that work for you? Like, Hold on, hold on, let's see. It, it absolutely works first round because that's just not what I thought was going to happen. Hello, Taxman. I don't think this will be the Taxman. Not the way that he's playing the build. Hold on. I can dodge the Lancer. And then his whole game plan comes apart. Oh, lag! Never mind! Okay, not on this connection. He is the tax man. Never mind. <laughs> I take it back. On a connection like this, 100% the tax man. Where are you going? Maybe not. Hold on. Hold on. 
Okay, new strategy. It's not just look for the precise dodge. It's stay the fuck away from this guy. Don't even let lag come into the equation here. In these one-on-one -on -one games, where it's just one person fighting another person, let this be a lesson that regardless of any technical aspect, if you are the smarter player in the lobby, you will win nine times out of 10. <laughs> just general lesson to be had there. If you are the smarter player, you almost always win. No swearing again, why? Trying Blade Dash like in first gen. It's a really cool game plan, but it falls apart as soon as uh, as soon as I realize how to counterplay it, which didn't take long. Took two rounds with a bad connection. Would have taken one round otherwise. Oh, lava's back with still the same build, still the same really scary. Sampu Sweet 16 setup. This is another guy that I should keep my distance from until like I have a really key moment, big opportunity. I I have more effective range than he does. Like there, I got too close. Should not have been that close. Oh, I'm against the wall. That's going to screw me. Yeah. Okay, that was my bad. Man, this build is so bizarre. The first gen. Look, look, look. When you do this for long enough, you get used to just filling in the blanks of chat messages. Because, you know, typos, just weirdly phrased things. Incredibly common in live chat. So you just... Man, I wonder if he does this because it counterplays Pulse Armor. Because, like, once you get up here, by the time you get up here, almost every player understands that Pulse Armor is just all around the best expansion. And I wonder if he's running Sweet 16s because he can stagger, quickly swap, and before the Pulse Armor even comes out, bow. Uh, tiny shotgun, 4k damage on stagger. I wonder if that's what the game plan is there. Like, that's what the, the thought process is there. Because it gets me every time. These are some tiny letters. <laughs> I had to really get in close to look at them. I want to try that Lancer guy again. If I could. I just want to see it again. It's so weird. But I'm going to get Sweet 16 and Sampu again. Oh, God. I like the golden arm on the right. The timing once again. After this match... He has realized that I'm trying to play range. Ouch. And 
It's working incredibly well for him. Damn, he's hitting me while I'm quick boosting. Oh, that's a minute. He's hitting me while I'm quick boosting. <laughs> Just, I'm, I'm trying to quick boost spam while I'm reloading the Etzogens, as you do. And I'm just getting staggered straight through it. It's wild. Stompus are great for stagger. I, their range is like their one downfall, but this dude's playing like pure lightweight assault boost setup. And he's definitely finding his way around it. Jesus. Stay away. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. No stun. I know it was a light chainsaw attack, but it should stun. The timing must have just not been in my favor at all there. Okay. Chool wig it is. I'm surprised how much progress I've made already in 45 minutes. Bethesda brought back some depth of mechanics from Morrowind and actually went back to filling their worlds with soul. It's him again. And personality. They could have easily gotten material. I, I really... The thing with Morrowind is, for me, it's easily the best Bethesda RPG. But... A lot of people don't like Morrowind because a lot of people just can't get into Morrowind. Like genuinely, so many people will try Morrowind and because of how the early game is, where it's so restrictive as you're trying to like, you know, get your, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this, your bearings and everything. Uh, a lot of people just bounce off the game, like, immediately. Super common that people just don't get into Morrowind because of how that early game is set up. I love it. I think that the early game, being the way it is, is, like, why I love Morrowind so much. To an extent. Oh my god. I'm trying so hard. But people just can't get into it, man. Which is unfortunate, because I've tried so many times to get my buddies into Morrowind. Because I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, if you just get into it, like, oh my. So good. So good. It's true, but like, if you can get into Morrowind, it's so rewarding. And there's so much to do it. Like, Morrowind also has the most, like, actual content of any Bethesda RPG. Even still, like, Starfield included, Morrowind just has more to do. I think there's, like, 500 quests in Morrowind. Something like that. Does anyone know? what? What's the total quest count for Morrowind? I think it's almost 500. I think it's a little under 500. It's insane. And with that... Because of, like, how affiliations and relationships and stuff work. In, um, 483, thank you. 483 quests. That, that would be the number I'm thinking of. Uh, there's the whole thing of, like, if you work with the Morog Tong, which are, like, kind of a, uh, I'm trying to think. They're like a Hitman guild. Like... Genuinely, um, they go out to like assassinate people. You pay them for hits, right? 
if you do that quest line and then you try to go work with the thieves guild the thieves guild will straight up tell you to fuck off because the thieves guild whole their whole thing like one of their core values is that they don't kill like it is completely forbidden to kill anyone when you're in the thieves guild so if you've previously worked with the guild that literally just goes around doing hits they're just not gonna want to put up with you at all they'll just turn you right away and you won't be able to do the quest line you'll be locked out because of your affiliation with the morag tongue later bethesda games don't do that later bethesda games will just like eh, whatever and even with like the thieves guild in oblivion and skyrim they still have the no killing rule but if you just kill someone while you're doing one of their quests no one cares as long as you got the quest done, eh, no one cares. They'll tell you you can't kill anyone. But nothing will happen if you do. Morrowind, I think if you, like, kill someone who you're targeting in the Thieves Guild quest line, or who you're stealing from, rather, sorry, um, I think it just abruptly will, like, end the quest line. Like, if you go back to them, they'll know that you killed the person and they'll kick you out you won't be able to continue the quest line. Morrowind, more than any other Bethesda game, to me, feels like you are actually, like, doing things. Like, there's some agency to it. And, like, people in the world actually react to what you do in, in a believable way. Got solid expansions too, right? Yeah, the, the expansions were good. Uh, one of the Morrowind expansions was the first time that players got to go to Skyrim in the Elder Scrolls games. One of the expansions, you just go to Skyrim. Oh no. Oh, he saved his pulse armor. It was close. It was close. We got Skyrim before Skyrim. Morrowind is so good, especially... I mean, no one's playing the Xbox version. If you play the PC version... Um of Morrowind and you can inject like just some graphics mods to make the game look nicer. Like, you know, throw in a new lighting engine, throw in a mod that removes the draw distance limit. Cause if you play Morrowind vanilla, you can only see like five feet in front of you because the draw distance was so low. Cause the game was made to run on the original Xbox back in the day. Okay, I'm gonna need to take a break. This is like the sixth match with this guy. <laughs> I'm just going to need to take a break, like let myself sit in the menu for a minute after this. Because I've said it before with instance, instances like this where I'm playing the same person over and over. It doesn't matter if I'm winning or losing. I just don't want to play the exact same person like seven times in a row. I want that variety in my life. Like, I don't care that this guy has beaten me more than I've beaten him. I just, I want to play some other people. I could sit here and lose rank to him all day trying to figure out how to counterplay him. It doesn't bother me. It's just, I want to play other players. Ow. Jesus. For the mods. Yeah, no one's playing the original Xbox version nowadays anyway. Like, I, I was gonna say, especially if you play the PC version, but the only other version is the OG Xbox. So. Someday I'll probably play Morrowind on stream. I actually, I did a playthrough of Morrowind on Twitch way back when, when I was still on Twitch, like years ago. Actually, I vividly remember when I did it. It was like August into September of 2020. I played some Morrowind on my Twitch stream. Cause it was while, like I started the playthrough in Minnesota and then I moved to Florida. So it was like August of 2020. Um, I played Morrowind on Twitch stream and my community over there thought it was a really fun game for stream because the world is so weird and some really wacky things happen. 
You're playing the Xbox? Oh my. Oh, why? I mean, as long as you're playing it, I guess. For that draw distance, though, that's like the f the big thing with Morrowind Vanilla slash console is just that draw distance is so bad. Which sucks, because Morrowind has such a great world, like, visually, like, the art design and everything is just so, like, mm, chef's kiss, right? But, uh, if you play vanilla, like, unmodded, or you play the console version, you just barely even get to see it. Not a normie like Chol who needs good graphics or fun gameplay. I'm just going to take a minute. Scrolling through the... Oh, yeah, the menus were totally built for mouse. Absolutely. I've played the old Xbox version. It's what I played when I was a kid, and then later I got the PC version. The menus can be a mess on the console version. But hello, Proto. I'm doing good. I lost a ton of points to matching that guy, but I did start to get better at, ma at, uh, at the matchup with him. I, I did start to play better games against him. So some learning was was taking place. Really just tiny little movement stuff, but. Oblivion is still my number one. Oh boy. I like that practically vanilla fantasy experience. Yeah, that's fair. I, uh, of the big three Elder Scrolls games, Oblivion is my least favorite. And it's not like, oh, I just didn't play it back in the day, because I did. I, I played the 360 version when I was younger. It's just every time I try to go back to Oblivion, I'm either going to think like, oh, man, I want to play Morrowind for like the, the deeper systems and stuff. Or I'm going to think like, oh, I want to play Skyrim just for like a super streamlined, like easy thing, because Oblivion's in this weird in between. where it's still got some of those Morrowind systems that have just been made a little more streamlined. But it's nowhere near as, like, convenient and easy to get into as Skyrim. And for me, it has the least interesting world of the three. Like, you compare it to Skyrim and Morrowind, like, just in terms of the, uh, the areas. I get that it's, like, the most basic fantasy thing. And that's an appeal for some people. But for me, it's like, I want to go explore Viking land or... You know, the weird mushroom, like, alien creature country. Like, every time I want to go back and replay Oblivion, I end up instead bouncing to one of the other two. Although, actually going through, like, the Oblivion gates, that shit is cool. That's by far the best part of that game. And some of the quest lines in Oblivion are really good. Some of the quest lines are, are genuinely awesome. Does he have terminal? He has to. There's no way he doesn't have terminal. He doesn't. What does he have? What does he have? He didn't use an expansion at all. Oh, that was a juicy chainsaw in the dick. That was a really good one. I didn't think it was going to connect so cleanly there. But because it did, it was a free win. I still don't know what expansion that guy had. He never used it. There, there just there was no expansion as far as I can tell. Seriously though, Morrowind, 
Like, even if the only mod that you get is to remove the draw distance, life-changing in terms of playing that game. Was the lead designer, apparently? He was the director of Morrowind, I believe, if I remember right. I think Morrowind was the first game he directed. I think he was lead designer on Daggerfall. But I think he got up to director for, um, for Morrowind, if I'm not mistaken. I think he directed Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim. I think he did all three. I I'm pretty sure. I think he directed all three of those. He might have directed Fallout 3. I don't know as much about Fallout as I do Elder Scrolls. I like Fallout. I've never liked it as much as Elder Scrolls. Respect Chainsaw. Oh, he has terminal armor. He can't respect it. All right, Chainsaw food, boys. There's blood in the water. Go. <laughs> terminal armor equals victory. Even with the linear rifle and the Ronsetsu, a setup that would normally be really bad for me. And a bazooka. This guy has a setup that would normally terrify me. Uh-oh. God, that shit's annoying. <laughs> I know that we chose that ringtone for our timers because like it's kind of funny and groovy, but like, oh my God. If I can't shut it off really quickly. Oh my god, he has terminal. I forgot. Somehow. Ow. Oh my god, what are my bullets? Beautiful. Daniel, thank you for the sub. Um, hold on. Marwin director. Let me see. Was it Todd? It was Todd. He did direct. While I'm at it, let's just... Actually, hold on. Let me get back in the matchmaking before I go crazy on Google again, as I do. Keep things going here. But yeah, Todd directing Marwin back in the day is like one of the things that I do give him credit on, like career-wise. Oh, he didn't direct Oblivion. I was wrong about that. He did direct Skyrim. Um, Oblivion is the one that he didn't direct in that span of time. He's been around for a crazy amount of time. Oh yeah, like just at Bethesda even. Um, I think his first game at Bethesda was Elder Scrolls Arena. So I think he's been there for over 30 years. And dude, the next game that they're working on, and obviously he's still there, is Elder Scrolls 6. Like imagine still working on like your first ever game, career-wise, like 30 years later. There aren't many stories in the industry like that. Like even, um, Hideo Kojima got about to that 30 year mark and then he got dropped by Konami, couldn't work on Metal Gear anymore. Metal Gear was his first game in the space as well. So it's a very similar thing there. Um, I guess different though, cause he, he directed the original Metal Gear. Todd did not direct Elder Scrolls Arena. He wasn't a director until Morrowind. I know Morrowind was the first game he ever directed. That's just Todd Howard lore that I happen to know. Um, was developed by id Software and produced, published by Bethesda, yes. Okay, there's the- Oh, what? I tried to put it away. 
There's still a bit of weirdness with putting the chainsaw away for me. I don't know if it's on the game side or if it's on me. I can never really tell. Equally possible that it's both. What? What is that reach? Oh, Daggerfall was the first Elder Scrolls game that he worked on. Is that right? I thought it was, I thought he worked on Arena. Oh, I'm so pissed because I thought I had that. Totally thought I had that. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Todd Howard, career. Ah, he joined right after Arena came out. His first game development credit for Bethesda was as the producer and designer of Terminator Future Shock, which is a terrible Terminator game for the record. Really shitty terminal game, or terminal, Terminator game. It would have been cool if you played it back when it came out. It wouldn't have been that bad if you played it at release, but it's one of those games that like, you go back to play a game that's from like 95, and it feels like a game that's from 95, like in a bad way. Keep in mind, the 90s are like, for me, one of the prime eras of gaming. So I, I say that as someone who enjoys 90, 90s games, you know, there are games that feel like the 90s in a good way, and there are games that feel like the 90s in a bad way. Terminator Future Shock is one that feels like it in a bad way. Terminal. Chainsaw food. Assault armor chainsaw combo bypasses pulse shields. I have, but I value, I, I've experimented with it too. I value the protection of the pulse armor too much. Every time I take off the pulse armor, um, I find myself just dying way too fast because I am, I'm a midweight with pretty minimal defense. So pulse armor is kind of a necessity for me. He's kiting me, bastard. That's right. I'm dead. <gasps> Which one? Oh, I lost. Fuck. Do maternal was directed by Hugo Martin. I Did he not direct 2016? Oh no, I think he was, wasn't he the, um, oh, I think he was, uh, lead designer on 2016. Never mind. Cause I'm pretty sure he and Marty, I can't remember his last name, but Marty, uh, I think they swapped places on Eternal. I think Marty became creative director or lead, whatever they call it. Creative, if you ever hear the terms creative director or lead designer, they are the same thing. It's just depending where you work, they'll call it different things. Stratton, Marty Stratton, thank you. JRPG Golden Age, and there was also the Super Nintendo. That thing alone seemed like half the game's worth having it. Yeah. Like, you've got 90s in a good way, where you've got, like, JRPGs, if that's your thing. I'm not super into JRPGs, but definitely, like, that's the golden age for that genre. Um, you've got, like, System Shock 1 and 2. Uh, fuck, man. You've got Wolfenstein, Doom, Quake, Duke 3D, Shadow Warrior, Blood... Like, the 90s were so good. You got PS1, you got Resident Evil Trilogy, right? You've got so much good stuff coming out of the 90s, but then you've also got, like, just this gigantic pile sitting over there of, like, shovelware DOS games that are completely atrocious to try to go back and play. Terminator System Shock is one of those. It's in that pile. Did I just say Terminator System Shock? Ignore me. I'm losing it. I'm armoring my core right now. Brain power's all going towards that. AP 
Second time I've seen Lancer today. I would say this one is scarier than the last one. Oh, Terminal though? Oh, Terminal though. Terminal though. Yeah, the original, like all the Gen 1 Armored Core games were 90s, right? Wouldn't be the same without Mick Gordon. This, hear me out, completely false. You know why? You know why, chat? Everyone thinks of Mick Gordon's music when they think of the new Doom games. But Mick Gordon got fired after the release of Doom Eternal. And for the game's DLCs, the expansion packs for Doom Eternal, they brought in Andrew Holschult and David Levy to do the soundtracks for those. And they absolutely clean house. Like, I thought that Mick Gordon was the future of Doom music. Holschult and Levy pulled up and completely showed his ass up. If you haven't heard the soundtrack to Ancient Gods 1 and 2, go check those out. Because, oh my god, so much better. And I'm, again, for like five years, I thought Mick Gordon was absolutely like, he was Doom music. Then those two came in to replace him, and I have zero complaints. To be fair, Bethesda Softworks and id Software treated Mick like absolute shit when he was there. If you don't know the whole thing, like, there's, there's a whole lot out there about it. Um... But Mick Gordon got treated like shit working on the Doom games. And then he got fired. Like he stuck with it because he loved the games and the music he was making for them. He put up with it and then they fired him. So there, there's that whole thing. I, I feel bad for Mick just on the whole raw deal that he got working on those games. But at the same time, Holschult and Levy just, just, dude. They are the new future of Doom music. If they're not back for whatever project comes out of that franchise next, I'm gonna be pissed. And it's cool, cause like they have two distinct sounds. Like you could listen to their tracks because they, you know, one of them did this, one of them did that. They didn't work together. They worked on their own tracks separately. I mean, they did work together, but like they didn't collaborate on individual uh, level tracks. Like they, they were collaborating on the general sound and tone and all that, but they have their own two distinct styles as well within the soundtrack. And oh, dude, Holschult did Dusk too. Holschult does a lot of the new uh, indie boom shoots from New Blood. New Blood. I had to think. He did Dusk. I think he did Ion Fury, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think he did Wrath as well. Holschult works with them a good bit. And he's just, he's great. He's kind of like the new indie boom shoot soundtrack guy in the last few years, which is why they got him for Doom after they had to replace Mick. They were like, okay, who's the next best guy? And you know, there's this guy who's been carrying the entire boomer shooter scene with his metal soundtracks for all these indie games. And they got him. David Le Levy, sorry, I had never heard of before his Doom Eternal work, but that dude is awesome. I actually, if between the two, I think David Levy has a cooler style when it comes to the Doom Eternal stuff than Holschult. I just, I find Levy's tracks to be better personally, but they're both great. It's just, if I had to choose between them, uh, Levy's got it, dude. Musically, I mean, it's true. They. If you haven't heard those soundtracks, they're similar-ish to mixed stuff. Like, they're still very industrial. Oh, I'm dead. Tax man. <laughs> um, but they're very different. It doesn't sound like Mick Gordon do music. 
Wonder what Bobby Prince would make. Probably bangers. Look, but different bangers entirely. Entirely different bangers. Because I, I like Bobby Prince a lot. Obviously, he has this massive legacy in like the FPS genre, musically, but I think that the new school guys kind of show him up. Maybe that's just because we're still in the new age of like video game music. Like, Bobby Prince's tracks are great for what he was working on, but they wouldn't work nowadays, you know? His style just wouldn't fit anymore. If that makes sense. Taxman's gonna mess my shit up. Linear rifle kiting build is absolutely the tax man for me. It's just like, yeah, I, I could win, maybe, but odds are not great. They're not in my favor by any means. Oh, this round might be in my favor though. It is. That round was the tax man. Um, the tax man is a fun term in ranked games like this for like the guy who shows up and you, your matchup is so heavily in his favor that he's basically just gonna like get the win, like 90% chance or more that he's just gonna win no matter what. So you kind of just have to give him his points and let him go back on his way. Like you just have to accept that you're probably gonna lose the points and that's fine. You can still try to not lose them, but chances are you will. Damn it. I was hoping that he would call it too late and I would get enough damage. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, was he reloading? I'm still dead. That was almost good, but he kicked. Like defeatist framing? No, it's just like, you gotta give him the points. It's one of those matchups. It's like when you match Shaheen on Tekken. Like, no one plays Shaheen. Genuinely no one. To the point where it's just, if Shaheen appears, you're not gonna know the matchup. Because to know the Shaheen matchup, you either have to have played genuinely like a ridiculous amount, right? And it, like you just, you have to have played the game enough to get lucky to play Shaheen for hours on end, which for the record, I have played one Shaheen on ranked ever on Tekken 8. That is how few people play him. I've played 150 hours. I've played one set against the Shaheen. So if a Shaheen shows up, I'm not gonna know the matchup because I'm not labbing that matchup for hours to learn it either because no one plays him, it's not worth the time. So Shaheen shows up, it's like, okay, this is the tax man, I'm not gonna know his attacks, he's gonna run through me, it's whatever. Like, this is the only Shaheen I'm gonna fight today, or probably for the next month. Just let him have his points, and I can earn them back later on. It's fine. It's not defeatist, it's realist. Hold on, I wanna read the paragraph. Ow! Bitch chainsaw! <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take what I can get. Uh, played Armored Core when I bought AC1 for PS1. Uh, to AC3 and Silent Line. Recently been repurchasing Passworks for AC6's debut. Man. That's a lot of... Oh, no swearing. I do have the timer on. I'll just have to reset it. Hold on. Forgot. Completely forgot there was no swearing. Oh! Oh. 
hey, if it works, it works. I, I feel like I got really lucky on that match again. Like, that's one where I don't feel like I really won. I feel like luck was just super in my favor. Uh, reset this. But welcome, Ryu. I'll just stick with Ryu. Not butcher the pronunciation with my horrible Japanese that I haven't studied in like three weeks now. It's starting to get real bad. I bet you I can't read hiragana anymore. <laughs> like if I were to try, I probably would have the worst time trying to read again. I just have to hit the flashcards. I've not hit the flashcards in a minute. Um, fought all the ghosts in the Tekken 8 demo, and Shaheen was the only one that gave me any trouble. Dude would not stop slide kicking me. The slide kick, also, I, I know a bit about the Shaheen matchup personally, because Owen main Shaheen for like a few weeks. So I, like, I use Shaheen as an example, but it's not a personal example, because I actually do know the Shaheen matchup really well, especially compared to your average player. Like, even top level players, are not labbing the Shaheen matchup because they just recognize that it's not worth the time, right? Um, so I, I at least have that going for me. But the thing with Shaheen too is that slide kick is a 50-50. When he jumps in, he can either do the slide kick or he has a wall crouching mid hitting elbow that fully, uh, it crumples you on hit. So if you try to crouch to block the low, or if you try to low parry it, you're gonna get crumpled by the elbow if he throws it into full combo. It's a true 50-50. That jump into slide. Oh, I'm dead. <gasps> I won somehow. Would actually be a good use for AI. Uh, there might be an AI to auto bleep words. How funny would that be if redeeming no swearing wasn't actually like, I can't swear. And instead it was, uh, I turn on like the automated thing that bleeps my words every time I swear. That could be funny. Uh, I think you probably could use it like something like that, but you'd have to have like a couple seconds of stream delay on just because obviously it can't predict that you're about to swear. But you could definitely use it to uh, to bleep stuff as it goes out through OBS uh, with a couple seconds of delay on it. What is this? What is this going to be? Oh my god. Okay, plasma thrower. Bazooka, bubble gun, and a McDonald's logo. What is this? What is this matchup? Oh, there's another bazooka on his on his right shoulder. I didn't know what that was. It's another bazooka. Assault armor? Are you insane? Yes, he, I mean, look at the build, clearly. But... He has advantage up close until I get stagger, so... Once I get some good damage, we just hang back. That plasma thrower will kill me so fast. Along with the bubble gun and bazooka. Like he will just run my shit. Oh, it's supposed to be no swearing. Hmm, there it is. That's what I'm talking about with the plasma thrower. Well, he's very eager to throw the assault armor out. Incredibly eager, actually. I didn't even have to have the chainsaw in my hand. AP at 
There's the hover mode. The proximity explosion on these bazookas is the worst. So annoying. I don't know whose idea that was at FromSoft, but it was an awful idea. They didn't need to have goddamn, oh, no swearing. They didn't need to have burst missiles for their bazookas. It's ridiculous. Oh my. Just a funny flat cannon. I hate them so much. Can't stand the bazookas in this game. Because you have to dodge from so far away to be able to actually avoid the damage. take those he didn't use it and i was gonna fake him with the chainsaw but then he just stood in place i just got handed a win like out of nowhere completely unexpectedly but we take it that's a scary build genuinely very scary the bubble gun is weird i don't know what the what the deal with the bubble gun is might not have had boost on. Maybe that could be it. I have a sound effect on my roadcaster where I can bleep my words if I want it, but I have to man. Yeah, you can have like a button for it. Like that's easy to do. But. It's easy to forget boost can turn off. That might be what happened now that you mention it. Oh, it's the same guy. Oh, he's going to be pissed. But he's also going to be very afraid of the chainsaw because of that. Because I actually hit him with a neutral chainsaw, he's going to be terrified. He's going to respect the hell out of this chainsaw now. I think this build is really scary. Aside from the bubble gun, I don't know what the... The thought process is with it. Does anyone know, like, what, what's, the, what's the potential benefits of running the bubble guns? Oh, this is, this is big. Oh, big hitch. Hold on. Build extra impact against shields. Oh, that might be it. That might be it. I feel like there's so few people use shields though. I guess he's problem, I mean, he's seemingly relying on the bazookas to deal damage to people like me who don't use them and use melee instead. Huh, what? Okay. take those for all like spongebob that must be it that actually has to be it they have the fastest reload but they suffer on damage and impact i feel like especially because he's doing a weapon swap it would it's kind of weird to use the faster reload like on the left hand i kind of get it having faster reload because it's always stuck in your left hand sure but the right hand he's swapping with. Oh, but maybe it's because he's doing like a swap where, you know, spray bubble gun for pressure until it overheats, swap to bazooka, shoot, swap back off for the reload sort of thing. 
That might be the thought process. I mean, I've talked about, and you can see it in my AC6 review, I used a lot of footage from that build, but I had one where I was swapping between dual bubble guns and dual shotguns, because they have great synergy in that sense, where it's just constant, like, bubble guns deal damage, go, 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 they overheat, you swap off for a quick shotgun blast, and then you swap back, and by about the time that you've done that, the, um, what's it, the bubble guns have come off of overheat, it's just constant damage output and pressure. And it's a super fun build. Can't be that late on the reaction. Can't be that late on the reaction. I see him matchmaking you three times in a row. Now, sometimes it just happens because the player base is fairly small uh, on a Armored Core 6. So especially once you're up near the higher end of the ranked pool, like in A ranks up here, uh, is, and playing in the middle of the day, the way I do for stream. Uh, sometimes you just get stuck in like a loop of playing the same person because it doesn't have anyone else who's matchmaking at the same time. You know what? Valid, but now you're dead. Good idea, but you're dead. Sorry, that was toxic. I meant to say GG because I know that more than any other game I play, when it's Armored Core, it's likely that that person is maybe watching stream. Or will watch the VOD later, something like that. If I play him again, we'll wait, just so that I can get more variety. Symbols, how many was it? Let me, hold on. Dashboard. Player count's kind of okay right now, actually, like 1,600. Yeah, yeah, but the 1,600 in a game that's primarily single player, right? Um, Because the thing there is, it's very safe to assume that if I'm being generous, minimum 50% of those people are playing single player. And then of those 800 people that are potentially playing online, which I, I doubt it's that many, um, they're gonna be split between like casual rooms and all the various ranks. And especially once you get up to A rank where like a lot of the people are gonna be playing in like if they are playing ranked, I think the majority would be in probably B. Also, terminal armor is huge. <gasps> Not when I get hit with dual bazooka, though. I can only play against other PS4 users. There's not even PS4 to 5. Yeah, there's no crossplay. There really should be. Because, you know, sometimes you could be like, and that, you know, to be fair, that's not the entire population because, you know, people are playing on console and stuff. But here, because there is no crossplay, it is like, yeah, that's that's just the entire player pool that I'm working with here. But yeah, no crossplay was a very bad idea. Especially in a game like Armored Core that's pretty niche. Like the game did sell a lot because it's FromSoft. But concurrent player count on Steam says a lot, right? Like you get people who come in, play the single player, they've played it, they move on to the next game, maybe they'll come back in like a year or two to replay it, right? Because Armored Core isn't a multiplayer game at its core. It's a single player game that has multiplayer, right? As is all FromSoft stuff. It's That's not exclusively Armored Core. Which is why I say, like, even saying that 50% of the players on PC right now are playing online is probably generous. If it weren't for ranked play, I wouldn't be playing PvP. Just straight up. I mean, I've said it before. It's, it's not new for me to say that. Uh, PvP is fun, but once you play it for a few hours in the casual rooms, like, you've, you know, you've had your fun with it. At least that's how it is for me. 
I know that there's a very hardcore PvP crowd. For, and now for me, it's like, okay, I want to play and get up to the top rank. And then I'll be back at that point where it's like, okay, I've had my fun. Uh-oh. Yeah, I, I didn't start moving in time to get above that. And consider that I'm more hardcore than the majority of like the general Armored Core, not Armored Core player base. People who bought Armored Core. Uh, users who purchased the game, right? Defeated the world yet? We're almost to A4. Where did Professor Troll go? Thomas. Thomas. We, we lost the beard back in like December. But hello. Oh, oh. I did not need to do this. We're, we're fine. We're in a good spot still. Chainsaw bitch! You never got Santa Troll. It's true. I never played Front Mission. Uh, is Front Mission the one that is a, um, it's a strategy game, right, chat? Is, am I thinking of the right one? Front Mission is the strategy mech game, I think. It's like XCOM, but mechs. And instead of customizing your soldiers with like classes and weapons, you build a mech for your units. I think that's Front Mission, isn't it? Oh no, this is the tax man if I've ever seen one. Although he's lightweight, so I might be able to stagger him quickly enough. Hmm. To like three million. Oh yeah, like the best-selling Armored Core game back in the day was Armored Core 2. Like it, the franchise never sold more than it did with AC2. And to be fair, AC2 also got a bit of a boost because it was a launch PS2 title. And the PS2 was the best-selling console of all time for a really long time. And when it first came out, notoriously, there weren't a whole lot of games on it. Like, its launch window was actually kind of known for how few games were available. So that really carried the sales of Armored Core 2 as well. Um, but yeah, just literally going and making the Souls games for like a decade and fully committing to that bit, if you will, to that uh, formula. They then just came back and made another funny mech game and like 3 million sales just absolutely destroyed the sales figures of anything Armored Core had ever done before. And thankfully, the game is really damn good too. So there is just like this entire new generation of Armored Core fans now because of AC6. Like people are going and kind of retroactively playing the older games just because this shit was so good. Oh my god, I'm dead this round. Anime girl forever. Thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. I always knew they were real. Let's go. This time, I'm not gonna do stupid shit. I swear. Uh oh. He's kiting me so hard.
I tried. Ow, I'm dead. Oh my god, those plasma missiles. The scariest, man. Ah, shit. Metal Gear 4? I've been dying to see it. Metal Gear Solid 4 is still a few weeks out. Because I have one more Metal Gear spinoff and one more Ace Combat game first. And then Metal Gear Solid 4. But we're getting closer. That I, I knew going in that the gap between uh, MGS 3 and 4 would be like the largest one for that series in terms of the mainline titles. Strategy RPG that involves mechs. I thought so. I thought it was twice. Hello? Hold on. This time, maybe? Uh, are female VTubers classed as anime girls, or is that a hot topic debate? Well, I knew they were real because I know one, right? I know an anime girl. Of course they're real. Duh. This is the same guy. He changed his build, though. Double bazookas and missiles is a little scary, but I'm less scared of this than his last build, to be honest with you. Linear rifles mess me up way more than this stuff does. Ooh, except for when I get a direct hit like that. <gasps> Good to know. Good. To know. The knowledge is is really important on that one. Noted, he has assault armor. Gotta bait that out before I go for the kill. But this shouldn't be too bad. His name is Hard Puncher. He, that is his name. MGS4 is my favorite game. You just go around on the internet saying that? You are a brave man. You are one brave man. Um. Okay, here we go. I was like, is he not gonna move? What are we doing here? I guess I'm a brave man, too. Because I was brave enough to say that MGS3 wasn't my favorite. But God knows that the, uh, the comments and the like-to-dislike ratio reflect how bad of an idea saying that on the internet is. Okay. Thank you, Chainsaw! That one was my bad. I know that the chainsaw is wonky. Ooh, yeah, that hurts a lot. I'm probably dead. Yeah, proximity. Ghost Pavel, no, uh, MGS2 is my favorite so far. The three is my second favorite so far in terms of just personal enjoyment. But I also said that in there. And people still freaked out. I think there's just a very like vocal group where it's like MGS3 is the absolute best thing ever. Like a, a small group, a very vocal minority at that. Where it's like this is the greatest video game known to man and if you say otherwise it is heresy. Oh, thank God. That was so close. Ghost Babble's not bad. I think Ghost Babble's actually pretty good. I think it's the best um, 2D Metal Gear for sure. 
but again, like Metal Gear 2, I think is my favorite 2D Metal Gear. But I think Ghost Babble is the best one. Where like I also said in the MGS3 video that even though that's my second favorite game in the series so far from just like a personal enjoyment standpoint, um, I think MGS1 is still a better game, like in terms of its overall design and stuff than 3. But it does seem like there are some things that just I didn't know were present in MGS3 that like no first time player would know. Uh, so when I replay it on stream, I might find more to love about it and it might pull itself up. Cause there's a ton of like small little secrets and stuff and like alternate ways to approach things that people pointed out in the comments. That does seem like it would make the game a lot cooler but you would also just have to know those things going in or like have someone else tell you or, you know, eventually learn about them on like a third playthrough sort of thing. Dude, my drone is getting shut down so much. I thought that was assault armor. Okay, the chainsaw is definitely bugged if you try to cancel it with a boost, it, unless it's intentional. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I can confirm, I had my suspicions from earlier. If I start boosting with the chainsaw and I cancel out of it with a quick boost, like if I go in for the attack and then I cancel it, it's going to automatically launch into another attack a second time. And then once I boost cancel the second time, it actually stops attacking. I don't know if that's intentional. If it is, it feels terrible. Um... I'm gonna assume it's a bug because it feels really bad and I don't, like, I can't think of why they would do it that way. It's also only with the uncharged version. I should mention, it's with the light attack version. The heavy doesn't do it. Shit. Receiving the closest thing to enlightenment while being inside a box, I did get that one, yes. That was me. That was a little scary. GG, and uh, now I know more about the chainsaw mechanics. I think that's a bug. It has to be. Especially considering that the heavy version doesn't behave the same way. Because if I just cancel out of it with the heavy version, it doesn't do it. The full charge doesn't do it. It's only if I just tap the trigger that I get like locked in for a little longer than intended. even if I try to cancel it. Now hear me out, Dark Souls. I think this build would be even better if instead of that blade, you had a chainsaw. Hear me out, hear me out. I'm just saying. AC Advance or Northern Wings? Definitely Advance from what I know. I think that Advance actually has like some really cool potential if it were turned into a more proper AC title it, just for like story and setting and stuff. Like it could just be a prequel to AC3. <gasps> okay, I'm dead anyway. For a second I slipped out of the second one and I thought, I thought there was a chance. Okay, I might have a game plan. I have plans that I cannot share right now because the haters will sabotage me. Oh, that hit! That's crazy. There's so much lag on this match. Oh no. Oh no. Please. Shit. That kick was insane. GG though. That kick was wild. 
The first sword I thought was just I underestimated the sword, but it might have been the same thing that the kick was. Chainsaw can't melee cancel? It can. It might be a little bugged, but it can. I think it is bugged. I think it's just not supposed to behave that way. XI, the i that's the iPhone one, right? Oh, that makes so much sense. It's XI. I get it. This guy's build is scary. I can win, but it, he scares me. A little bit. Ooh, ow, 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 ow. Oh, I think they have assault armor. Or no, did they have terminal? Well, I'm not going to find out this round. Assault armor, I thought so. I just have to do a better job at scaring them. They reacted to me not having the chainsaw. A lot of people, if I just get close, they'll pop it. Because they're afraid of the chainsaw potential. They don't even really look for it. But once they start looking for it, things get a little dicier for me, trying to bait assault armor out. Thank God he didn't get any punish damage in. That was the greatest chainsaw of my life. Have you ever seen a more beautiful chainsaw execution? Oh, I'm dead. Maybe not yet, but probably. Oh, the lag, Jesus. Can we talk about the chainsaw? <laughs> I am so shocked that that connected. I want a rematch as well. I hope I match that, that guy again. That's the first time they beat me, I'm pretty sure. And now I want revenge. They're not allowed to beat me. Come on now. We could very easily get A4 today. I said like an hour and a half ago that we definitely wouldn't. But considering I've still got more than an hour to go. It's very within reach. Oh, and then we would be less than one rank from S, dude. Let's do it. Let's go all the way. Fuck. <laughs> Uh-oh. Might have a plan. Dude, the lag. Fuck me. Not to be that guy, but you know, when it's there, it's there. I have no energy. I can't escape. I didn't say it doesn't have potential. But I think that, uh, I think that advance has more potential. As just a straight prequel for AC3. Jesus, fuck. Leave me alone.
Shit, I missed my chance. I didn't think he was actually gonna stagger there. GG. I could have had that round. I just wasn't expecting that so soon. That's what, that's... I need... Set... Mm -hmm. I need eight wins to get into A4. I'm good at math. I, I got there eventually. Not a flat eight wins. We need seven and a half wins. But it doesn't work like that. The chainsaw war edged. I fought you earlier, didn't I? Oh, he must have dropped out of his promos and now he's back. Because I absolutely recognize the emblem. I don't know. If I fought this build? Oh no, I did. I remember it now, now that he's using the drones. No, I definitely fought this build. His build lost some weight. Oh, okay. Are the frame parts a little different? Sampus are scary. I don't... I feel like they're not that scary anymore. Because with the Sampus versus the Etzogens, I can just outrange Sampus. And because we're still relatively close because of the Etzogens' effective range, like most of the time, I can just hold them at range until I get a stagger, and then I can still easily get in for my chainsaw punish. Like this round, not going perfectly. But because of the range advantage, even though I don't have the same impact buildup, the damage makes up for it. I'm not that afraid of Sampus, at least when I have the Etzogens. If I'm running Sampus, or if you're running something where you have to get close, like shotguns, I can see where they're scarier for you, for sure. But being able to outrange them is life-changing, while still being close enough to play like the melee game. It, I'm kind of balling against Sampu builds. Not gonna lie. And there's a lot of them, so thankfully I'm balling against them. I would hate for it to be the same guy only because he's on placements. Like normally playing a few a few rounds, like getting a whole set in with people is kind of fun. Okay, it's not. Bro, what is this? Okay. That damage was so delayed that I now know we have a ton of lag on this match. So I need to be very afraid of bazookas and definitely those cannons as well. But it looks like he's saving the cannons for punish, which, oh. It's Cole blaming lag. Well, it's. The game has terrible netcode. Yes, it's really bad. Okay, so those do um, my entire health bar in neutral. Good to know. Don't get very close to him. Oh my god!
What is intro boss laser? What is that? It, it seems like it's a meme from what Tibby said. What am I missing? Sounds like excuses. The lag in this game, because it, it, it's purely peer to peer, Jess, and there's no regional matchmaking. So, a lot of the time I'm playing players who are from Japan or like Europe. And we just straight up have like peer to peer matchmaking. It was just his name twice. Oh, okay. So, it's like, you know, playing a competitive game on 200 milliseconds of ping. And the net code works in the way of if I hit them on my screen, damage is dealt. So you'll see a lot of instances where like on my end, it doesn't look like I'm getting hit, but I'm taking the damage because on their screen, I took the hit because there's like a half a second desync on some of these matches. I played this guy a few times today too. Um, this dude plays exclusively kiting builds because I did not play this build. He just plays various different kiting builds. And kiting builds are the bane of the mad chainsaw. completely possible to get around, but it's rare that I can get two rounds back to back against kiting builds like this. Ooh, there's one. Meta JP Lamb makes me want to claw my eyes out. Explain, what is JP Lamb? I'm assuming JP is because it's uh, a common Japanese build. But explain. Oh my god. I just need damage, no chainsaw. Bruh! Are you fucking kidding me? Can we not count that on no swearing? Cause fuck. I'm so pissed. I was gonna win and dude just dipped right before I did. I'm pissed. I am pissed. Rematch me against that guy. I'll do it again. I don't make the rules. God damn. Fine. I'll add the time. But seriously. It's worth another minute. What a bitch. Plays kiting builds. Disconnects if he's going to lose. Yeah. No wonder he's an A4. It's hard not to be if you play like that. I mean, it's hard not to be an S if you play like that, but you know. What is this? What am I about to play against? Oh, soft lock user. I also recognize the emblem. We've played this guy before, but not this build. Absolutely not this build. I would recognize it. Whoa.
I have to go to him and he knows it, unfortunately. Thankfully, I'm using bullets. And I've got, oh, come on. Last season was the worst for DC players. Oh, you just mean there were a lot of them? I didn't get much of it until like the last couple streams where I've suddenly had more people disconnecting on me than before. That hit me! Our connection is awful. All right, we're just gonna have to go for it. Neutral chainsaw time. That's still not gonna get me very far, but. I got stuck on the wall. You just teabagged me. Did I just get teabagged? Give me a rematch. Now. I will neutral chainsaw this guy on loop. He's just boosting. Like he's just boosting in quads. He's got a slow build. I can hit neutral chainsaw. I don't typically go for it. But I could out damage him if I did that. Give me rematch now, please. Is it him? Is it him? Please. Damn it. Oh no. Oh no. Electric pistols and shoulder cannons? Oh no. It's so Jover. But it's never Jover till it's Jover. Oh, the discharge! Well, there goes my pulse armor. <coughs> That'll do it. I choked, laughing. Oh, ow. I can win this, maybe. What's the effective range on the stun pistols? Anyone have the knowledge? Can I zone him a little bit? Yeesh. Of course you have terminal. Stun effect is infinite? Yeah, but what's their effective range? You don't mean their range. They don't have infinite range. Surely. One fifty nine. They have an effective range of about one sixty, and I've got like two thirty, so I could zone it. I could zone that, which is great to know. And I absolutely should strive to zone stun pistols from now on. I need a piss break. I have absolutely been chugging water, so I gotta go. I'll be back in a minute. Feel free to get up, get a drink, snack, bathroom break, whatever, while I'm up. And when I come back, we'll see if I can get myself up to A4 in the next 50 minutes or so. I'll be back in a minute.
Okay, I'm back. I'm ready. I think. Hopefully. I have such a ridiculous amount of the uh, the nest points. What 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 all can I get with these points? Again, I, I know you can get like the name plates, right? You can get special name plates with them. But I don't remember any of them being all that great. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay. Exigens and stun pistols. Chat, I think I'm gonna mess with my FCS to try to get more mid-range effectiveness going on. Because now that I know that my effective range goes up that high, I'm gonna try to balance it a little more. Oh God. Because like here, if, if my FCS was doing a little bit more at mid-range, I think we would be fine in this matchup. Shit. I shouldn't have even gone for it. I could have killed him with damage. That was stupid. That was my round if I didn't do that. I can reproduce nine ball. Um, not super accurately. I think you can get pretty close. But uh, unfortunately they don't have like a, a frame part set that looks just like them. I wish. the shame of it. I didn't need that chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, I should definitely, like, if I can get the chainsaw, great, but this guy's taking enough damage by the time that I get him there that I can just kill him with gunfire. I don't need to go in for it. The rest are improvising. Yeah, which, like, the, you know, the, the head and the core piece like, those are some of the most important parts to get right for a cosplay build, right? Like, those are some of the most quickly, like, identifiable parts. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm dead. He's too close. Shit. Yeah, I totally could have won that with more mid-range tracking. So as great as it is to just be lasering at close range, uh, a balance might be better. Might be. No guarantee that like across the board it will be, but I think it's worth a shot. Now that I'm running Essigens instead of Sampus, cause Sampus are only effective up to like 160. So with those, it's like, yeah, I can't really use them outside of close range anyway. But now that we're running these, I've got a lot more wiggle room. Um. That mid-range is crazy, but I do probably want a little more close than mid-tracking. That would be really good. That could be a little, like, if I just want a tiny bit more. Hold on, because this had 12 mid-range. This would still be nearly three times the tracking at mid-range. And I would be losing, like, 30% roughly a little less than 30 of my close range tracking. So that would be a pretty decent trade off. If I want to still get more out of my close range. 
I do want to prioritize the close range still. But I'm just, you know, I'm trying to get more out of my mid range. Now that I realize that my range is longer, I thought my range was more like 180. I didn't realize it was like 240. So I'm trying to get a little more out of that mid range now that I realize. I think it'll be very worth. I wish there were better nine ball parts in this game, though. Just uh, the like, come on, man, it's nine ball. People are going to want to cosplay nine ball. That's why they put him his whole set into uh, into Nexus before they even did nine breaker. They put his whole set in there. Oh, sweet Jesus. I'm going to get staggered so fast. Okay. This one might hurt. And a shield is interesting. Nope, I'm not eating that stagger. Absolutely not. I can zone him, thank God. Yeah, that feels pretty nice, I gotta say. Because mid-range is what? Everything up to 250? Er, yeah, up to 250, I believe. That feels a lot better. Got nine ball headpiece and neck. I don't think we did. I don't think I have it because it's on disc two. I'm pretty sure. I didn't need to use this. I feel dumb. I'll take what it'll give me. Nice boost cancels. Is it up to 300? <gasps> it looks like it looks like it might be more like 300. Just based on like how hard my reticle is holding to him. It's definitely not more than 300 for mid range. And yeah, I mean, at that point, I'm not even getting good damage, but tracking is tracking. Less time required to get the double lock is still a huge benefit. Oh, that really hurt. A smart play from a smart man. Um, I'll take it. Hey, if, if it's a win, it's a win. Doesn't have to be the cleanest. If it gets me the victory, I'll take it. That was actually shockingly scary. Good old dick saw. If it gets us the win, it's worth it. Talbot seems good. Seems like a solid all around FCS. Dicksaw, indeed. If we could get up to A4, that would be awesome. I've got 40 minutes to do it. And I need eight wins. Assuming no losses. Eight wins could happen really fast if I got on a good streak. Considering just how short matches are. But I wouldn't expect that. So there's a chance we could get to A4. I don't think we will, but we could. Is what I'm saying right now. Oh, sweet. Jesus. He's going to try to play close range. He has a shotgun and a pile bunker with his linear rifles. That actually works in my favor. That kind of defeats the counterplay against me with linear rifles. Nice kick. Holy shit. Never mind, he's terrifying. 
I don't like it. I don't like it. He has used his pulse armor. He thought I was going to chainsaw him. That worked out massively in my favor. <laughs> I was confused for a second. I was like, why the pile bunk? It's because he thought I was coming in with the chainsaw. I lucked out big time on that. Oh my god, heart attack city. I'm dead. Oh, I almost made it out and I absolutely would have won if I did. Shit. It was close. Almost. There's a good chance. Crazy movement happening. This guy knows what he's doing. He's a definite threat. Do the three manufacturers of AC parts from AC3 exist? No, it seems like it's in a different uh, timeline. It seems like it's a different continuity from Gen 3. Like, we don't know. It seems like it's just its entire own timeline for AC6. As of right now, there's no direct connection to any other Armored Core game here. Uh, they definitely could pull a... Armored Core 5 and Verdict Day move where in a follow-up they just randomly are like, oh yeah, uh, here's uh, I don't know, Mirage. Hell, they could be like, oh yeah, here's Murakumo Millennium. Like, they could just randomly tie this to any generation they want to. But are technically the same? No, they just are the same. Uh, in a in like old what what's it like strategy guides and stuff they had some extra lore where they just flat out said that they were directly the same continuity there's just a huge time skip between four and gen five like a huge time skip not to mention like having some of the What's it called? Uh, the cradles in one of the maps in Verdict Day. As well as... Uh, what's it? The Spirit of Mother Will is in one map too. No, nope, you're not getting out of that. Playing on uni Wi-Fi is insane. I could not imagine. I think it's like 300 years or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's something. It, it's a long time. Oh, and White Glint being the final bot, like a reconstructed White Glint just being the uh, the final boss of Verdict Day. I forgot about that, too.
hope the uni Wi-Fi didn't screw him too bad. There's a good possibility that uh, on his screen, some of those attacks did not actually connect. If he's on university Wi-Fi. Jesus, man. You know, I'm on gigabit ethernet and I have the connection quality on this game that I do. I can't imagine the university Wi-Fi connection on this game. He's a trooper for that. The ACs are so dang short and stout. I really like the Gen 5 ACs. They're so, like... It's completely different from anything else in Armored Core, but so cool. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I've seen this one before. I don't think this one will be bad. I didn't see what's on his left shoulder, but I think we're fine. He even has the emblem. Okay. What is, oh, is it a dagger? It looks like a dagger or maybe a slicer considering he's doing Steel Haze Ortis here. Ow, 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 ow. Dagger it is. Assault armor. Good to know. Don't get staggered first. Yikes. Fuck. Oh my god. Well, shit. Oh yeah, they do both use the slicer. You're right. That was a swift ass kicking right there. Dude really pulled up. Bop, 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 bop. Dead. Dead. Assault armor directly countering pulse armor is really odd in this game. PvP wise. And I guess PV, uh, PvE, it doesn't matter as much, but PvP wise, it's really odd to me. Obviously, the games are not made like they're not designed around PvP, but you know, what's not fun playing someone who has the dagger and assault armor. Because what happens is, if I don't use my assault armor, locked into full combo with the dagger, I'm dead. If I do use it, I get assault armored into stagger again. Uh, I eat the combo anyway, I'm dead. It's legitimately like, doesn't matter what you do, you're dead. Unless you're heavy enough to just tank the combo. Or I guess the assault armor. It's one of those things that's like fun on paper, but then, you know, you, you encounter it like that, where it's like, oh, it's a rock, paper, scissors match, except there's no scissors. It's rock and paper and I just lose. assault armor. It's good if you can get stagger first. It doesn't matter if I can get him staggered first. Uh... Thank God. Assault armor chads deserve advantages. I could try Assault Armor again. 
Because it is like, if they don't do anything, chainsaw. If they do something, with pulse armor at least, uh, stagger them again, like negate the counterplay, chainsaw. I don't know why I'm not staggered there. Why that did no ACS buildup at all. I feel like I should be dead because of that counterplay. Should I try it? I don't know. I feel like if I try it, it might be an overreaction to one bad matchup. I'll let it ride for now. I, I'm, I'm, I'll let it ride. You don't want assault armor? I don't. I don't want it. I I overreacted to one bullshit matchup. I don't want it. I had to really think about it. And I definitely want the pulse armor. And I absolutely do not want terminal armor. I don't terminal armor users are just crazy. I think I've been killed by someone in terminal armor like twice in this entire ranked climb. I, I just I don't get it. He tries assault armor, dislikes it, repeat. Yeah, every time I try it, I, I'm like, no, I want the armor back. Or the bubble. They're both called armor, you know what I mean. I want the armor instead of the explosion. That was a good try, bucko. But you can't trick the chainsaw like that. was a good try. I almost flew into it. I may have sar uh, sounded sarcastic, but he did almost get me with it. That lag is wild. He tried it again. He didn't instantly die from it this time, but why would you do it again? It killed you last round. It's going to kill you again long term. Like, there it is. Why did you do it again? I'll take it. Back shot? Hey, you said it, not me. This one can't be put on me. I didn't say it. Bro did not respect it. He tried to catch me early both rounds like the first round it's like okay valiant effort it almost worked but you insta died because it was a big risk and second round he just tried it again you also just said it when you read it yeah but i read it keyword there i didn't say it it's not from my mind Here we go. He, <laughs> Chad, what's the over under that he tries to catch me early again? Place your bets now, hurry up, place them fast because it's not going to take long for us to get there. Will he try it again? He did not. That time he used it normally. There really wasn't much time to place bets. Close range matchups go real fast. Come take it like a man, you're not escaping this. Um, he escaped it. I messed up. I messed up. I take it back. <laughs> I've made a mistake.
He tried it there. That was honestly, like, I see the idea. I see it. It's just, it's not working, dude. That was also like, you know, maybe with the assault armor in, you could catch me. It's just not working, man. I hate to be that guy, but it's not. Oh, he still has it. We like that damage, though. I still got my value. Existed in six? It does exist in six. The Karasawa is here. Thirty percent buff and debuff from assault boost is crazy for this matchup. We need three more wins, or three wins from A4. And with the general pace I've been moving through A ranks at, that means that we would have about a stream of climbing through A4, and then we would just be doing placements until we get it. How many placements, like how many out of 10 do I need to win? Is it going to be like 7 out of 10? Oh no. Hey. Maybe. The build has changed. It's 8. Jesus fuck. They make you work for it, huh? Get away from me. Stay back. become the thing I hated the most. But you gotta do what you gotta do for these ranks out here. All of his ACs were painted like corn. <laughs> Why do his ACs have branding? That's the funniest shit ever. Incredible. Consistent branding across ACs is hilarious. <gasps> Shit. It was going well. This time. This time. This is my victory. It's mine to secure. My assault, or my pulse armor didn't come out the first time. I had to sit there and spam it to get it to actually start up. Oh, I'm fucked. But as a wise man once said, it's never Jover till it's Jover.
GG. That was incredibly close. Terrifyingly close. But we make it happen. Two more wins from A4. Now I kind of wish I had consistent branding across my ACs. I did for a bit, and then we just went pink chainsaw. We went for like the, the deadly oo woo build. That was my first loss in a six in a row win streak in promos. I'm sorry, but I had to do it. You know, I'm fighting for my rank out here too. This is just a damage setup. I'm sorry, he has a skull decal. Oh, that was so cool. On his helmet, on a uh, helmet, his headpiece. That's pretty sweet. What's the range on these machine guns? Anyone know it? He's definitely got a close range FCS. I can tell. And we love terminal. He's got a close range F FCS for sure. As soon as I'm out of 150, he can't hit me with the machine guns. hit by those missiles after the stagger really hurt. <sighs> I, I lost this one. Yeah, ow, the missiles. I was close, I was really close. Okay, I can turn this into a win. He's realizing that I've realized that he's using a close range FCS. <laughs> he's putting way more pressure on me this time, whereas the first round he was pretty neutral. But if I can just hover in that sweet spot between like 250 and 150, like I'm exactly where I should be to beat him. This is a bad situation. We have found ourselves in a bad spot. Fuck, I was getting too close. He's, he's faster on the ground than I am. Which is crazy. Crazy that he's faster on the ground than I am, by the way. I get that he's on tank tracks, but he's so heavy. What boosters does he have? Because holy shit. If we were both just boosting, like normal boosting, he was gaining on me. I had to quick boost to keep the range. Terrifying. Why is he faster than me?
Midweight biped beaten out by full tank in terms of speed. That's a little spooky. He doesn't have, oh, you're right. Oh no, I don't think it works like that in gen six, does it? I don't know, I've barely played tank in gen six. Like, like barely, barely, almost never touched it. Someone help me out here. I, I think that he does have a booster. Oh, oh, we just had a big lag spike off the rip. Like, why is he faster than me? How does this balancing work? Dude, you know what? Why am I running from him like this? Shit, that's why. I have an idea though, and that idea is to just chase him down with the chainsaw. I will win. have built-in boosters. I don't think it works like that in Gen 6. Unless I'm just mistaken. Why is he so fast? Oh, that's so tilting. Why is he faster than me? Someone, exp I need to look at his build or something. What the fuck? Why is he faster than me? <laughs> oh no, it does work like that. Why is he faster? Can anyone explain? Build wise. Am I, I, there has to just be some crucial information that I'm missing, genuinely. Hold on. 379. Yeah, see, the boost speed should drop by more than 100. If I were to swap out to tank legs and change nothing else, I would be slower by more than 100 units per second. At least on paper. And there's also travel speed there. But apparently the travel speed is completely equal. Oh, it's only a metric for tank legs. Does the travel speed? Oh my God, I get it. He has the boost speed and the travel speed stacked when he's on the ground. Because the travel speed is his treads pulling him and his boost speed is the built-in boosters doing what they do. So he's actually, like, if, if I were to throw on tank legs and purely stick on the ground, 
I would actually be moving at 412 units per second rather than 379. I would be faster. I get it. I had to look and see where that's coming from. But holy shit. That's a thing. Tank legs have a, a unique speed stat for when they're moving along the ground. And I am now baffled yet again by balancing choices in Armored Core 6. Because <laughs> you would think, like, oh yeah, you run the tanks so that you get, uh, you know, more firepower. You can carry more, but you're going to be slower. That's how tank legs work in Armored Core. Except for now. Where if I just swapped out to, to tank legs and I didn't fly around. I guess that's the restriction is you can't fly. Well, that guy was using that to his highest potential. Just like, oh yeah, maybe I can't fly, but I can just run you down with a constant damage stream. And I have the armor to outlast whatever the hell you're doing. Respect the chainsaw. Man, he's heavy, heavy. Oh, he does have an expansion. Okay, not terminal armor. I've never heard this thing about Gunhead. That AC was trying to like recreate an old, I would assume, uh, mecha movie. Full song. Found the expansion. Oh my god, I'm barely alive. There, I was like, it's not gonna last long if I can't get a stagger. Ooh. Ooh. That was a close one. I liked his tiny little legs on that giant ass AC. That was awesome. I need to plug my phone in. I need two wins. It's possible to hit A4 like right for the end of stream at this rate. I just have to go on a two win streak from here and we'll get it. That tank build knowledge is insane. That you can just build a setup f with like attaches and have that constant damage stream and just move along the ground like that to keep up with people. And unless they've got like a long range kiting build where they can actually hit you from like 300 meters up in the air, you're probably gonna outpace most builds in terms of just damage and survivability. I'm surprised that I don't see a lot of people doing shit like that. Uni Wi-Fi man is back. We'll see how this connection serves him. Was that just a cheeky dagger strike? In neutral? Goddamn, man. I see you. Uh oh. Oh, he has pulse armor. No! He won this round. Unless. Yeah, he won that. But will he win the next two rounds? We could always make a comeback. Oh, not a lag spike. Damn. I see what he's doing. 
And I mean, like, I like it in terms of it's cool and it's high execution and stuff. I don't like it, though, because it's probably going to force me into a losing position again. He's hanging back, waiting for his dagger to be ready. He's hitting me with like a side swipe. And then he's retreating again. And he's trying to outlast me. Because he realizes that if I wanted to, like if he was constantly chasing me, I could kite him. So he's playing around like one big opportunity. Every once in a while. He's playing the long game here. He's a smart player. That also really hurts. Oh, you're joking. None of my chainsaw connected there. Not one damage tick. It was right over his head <laughs> because of the way that it flew in there. Oh, pain. Just pain. That one hurt. Little bit. Chainsaw hovering right over his head. Shit, man. I got time for a win. Put myself in a great position for next time. I got time. Quick win. Easy peasy. You know how we do it. That's me. What am I up against? We might be okay. He looks pretty easy to stagger. I can kite him without being super far away. Like I can kite him and still easily get in for chainsaw. And he's got missiles, split missiles. Is he trying to kite me? He absolutely is. That is a strategy. Why did I do this? I like just no brained this. This was really dumb. He's, he's trying to give me rope to hang myself with. If I do the same thing back, he might just get impatient. Next round. This round, I've got to try to just keep enough pressure to hopefully stagger him. And like, maybe he has terminal armor. Oh no, I lost the stagger. And there's the damage. Yeah, let me try to just give him some room. If I can just get some damage in without taking any, then he has to come to me. I could try to force a win condition just from that. Okay, I definitely hit him more than he hit me. Oh, that missile's not great. So far, so good. I got too close. I'm still at advantage. I don't like doing this, but his build is very specifically designed to do exactly what I'm doing. And you can see him trying to do it, and I'm just not giving it to him. Oh no. I really don't like playing like this. But you gotta do what you gotta do for that win. It's all about the rank. Okay, I still have advantage. Terminal armor, are you fucking kidding? 
There's no way he has terminal armor on that. It's crazy. That is actually crazy to have terminal armor on. Oh my god. His whole build is just, you have to get close to me, and when you do, you're dead. Super weird. I mean, it works for him, clearly. Even though I recognized what he was doing and tried to play against it, it still worked. The terminal armor is what got me. I didn't think he would have that, so I was fine being close with him at the end. And I just, I should have known because he hadn't used any other expansion. But yeah, that came out of nowhere. I panicked. Anyway, it is about that time. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy and you haven't done so already, feel free to go ahead and leave a sub, come back another time. We're doing this. Uh, we're doing the Armored Core 100%. So we're doing Nexus right now. Uh, we're at the beginning of Gen 3.5. We'll be doing Nine Breakers soon, which will certainly be something. Uh, tomorrow is the best day of every week. And by that, I mean that it's Tekken Day. Everyone loves Tekken Day. Uh, be there or be square. I, I've started improving and learning again. I got out of that weird rut that I was in before. So should go better than the last Tekken stream. Probably, maybe. No promises. Um, also, if you haven't done so already, feel free to go ahead and leave a like. Helps out a lot with algorithm and stuff, so I'd appreciate it. Thank you if you've done so already. Thank you if you're about to do so. Uh, if you're looking for links to anything outside of YouTube to engage the community, Things are in the description, like Twitter, Discord server, whatever you might be looking for, it's down there. Uh, if you haven't seen the Metal Gear reviews yet, uh, Metal Gear Acid 2 review went up last week, and I have the whole playlist for that linked at, or pinned in a link at the top of chat. Uh, other than that, though, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you always back here next time. I hope you all have a good day. Thank you for coming to the stream, and goodbye. <laughs>